Brothers, I, I want to say at the outset, it, it was Mike and I's original intention when we talked previously to record, and uh, I failed to do that um, for whatever reason it didn't work. Uh, this time, I, I believe it is going to work. Hey, I, I'm uh, attempting to record a call as well through the um, conference call service. I haven't tried to record a call before. I don't even think that it wouldn't work, but... And, and, and when I called in, it, it said as much. It said recording now. Okay. And, um, yeah, just for the purpose of full disclosure, um, I'm on speakerphone, and uh, I'm using uh, my little digital recorder as well. So between the three of us, there ought to be at least one recording that works. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on speakerphone. I have no recording because I'm not that bright. Where I'm at in this, you know, I'm, I'm addressing these issues. My my interest in this, uh, foremost and certainly initially, was was as Tony's friend and brother, and he is my dear dear friend and uh, closer than uh, most men on the planet. Uh, he certainly is is in uh, a handful of men that I, I consider to be uh, very close and dear friends, and he knows that. And uh, yes, I do. I believe it, and I, I believe you do, um, and uh, and I know he's my friend and, and dear brother. Sure. And, and we've got much evidence on both sides uh, for many years to show that. Um, I'm also addressing these issues as a, as a member of Tony's Cross Encounters Advisory Board, and then third, uh, I'm addressing these issues as a pastor uh, for the protection of the sheep of uh, the Lord's fold in Beaverton, um, and uh, more broadly, even in Davenport. And at large, um, so that's that's my interest. That's that's where I'm coming from. Um, I have uh, that's my horse in the race. Um, it, it ultimately, for Christ, for His Church, um, for my brother Tony, um, and and yes, for for Mike Reed, and and uh, and the church there. At the conclusion of our last conversation, the conversation between Mike and I, oh, almost two weeks ago, I think now, we had established, and Mike, you can clarify on any of these, of course, but we had established that, that you meet alone with the married women, the single women, and one teenage girl, there being two teenage girls in the church, one teenage girl for regularly scheduled private council and instruction. I mean, you can give me a percentage, perhaps, but but there's a fair number of women of the church you're meeting with on some regular basis. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Again, yes. I, my answer would okay. be yes. Okay. I would say at this current time, uh, less than, I would say around half of the women of our church meet with myself or Elder Nick on a regular basis, whether that be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, uh, I would say about half of the women are probably right now, if I had to go look on the schedule. It bears defining alone. Um, we, we discussed it. Um, alone, uh, as we discussed, means you, you sometimes meet with the door closed, you sometimes meet with the door open, sometimes meet with the door open, and, and at times people walk by, and, and sometimes the door's open, and people are upstairs. Yeah, so, again, uh, that would be accurate. You see no moral compromise or conflict between 1 Corinthians 6.18, flee sexual immorality, 2 Timothy 2.22, flee youthful lust, Romans 13.4, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust, and your practice of meeting alone with the married women, single women, and the one teenage girl for regularly scheduled private pastoral counsel and instruction. Correct. In agreement with with your your position that 100 percent of pastors who fall in adultery are not pastors or not even believers, um, you went on when when I brought up King David is an example of a man after God's own heart who who uh, was alone with another man's wife and subsequently committed adultery, you, your immediate response 
was to say, quote, was David even saved? Which I find consistent. I appreciate your consistency, but I, I do find consistently alarming. But now I'm giving commentary. And, 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 and Chuck, I find it equally alarming that you would assert that you know when David was saved. Well, so okay. we don't need to address that. And, and that's your and, statement. That your statement there that alarms you of me saying we don't know when David was saved, salvation with the Holy Spirit indwelling versus salvation with the Holy Spirit not indwelling versus the, the way salvation is post-resurrection and the saving of the Holy Spirit makes that a different animal. So that well, is my contention. Well, David's entire life up to that point was a life of faith. Uh, a life described by the simple term a man after God's own heart and and then in his subsequent repentance from that tragic fall uh, he, he did say take not the Holy Spirit from me and we can debate the, the role of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament but I, I'm not really interested in that uh, the, the, the point being is that you were consistent with your position that 100% yes. and, and, Amen I yes. completely understand what you're saying yes. my concern Chuck is equal I realize I'm the one that we're having the discussion with for your desire, but, but it, it, is, it is interesting to me that we want to make provision for adultery inside of the pastorate. No, that, I find no, that alarming. Actually, I don't. I want to make no provision. I want to go to you to make no provision. So the, the final tidbit in that same vein was you saying that your boast is in Christ. I, I make no boast in my creed, which I appreciate, but my boast is in Christ. I make no boast in my flesh, but my boast is in Christ. And and your boast, to be clear, is that, that you're not going to fall because Christ is not going to let you fall, and you you build that off of First Corinthians six, nine to eleven. Following up there. You mean adultery? Yes. Okay. Is is that accurate? that my boast is in Christ, that I will not fall in adultery because of my boast in Christ. Yes, because that will not happen by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Mike, if a man has repented of being a child molester, and yet he today is having a shepherding ministry alone with children, is is that reflecting repentance? Pastor Chuck, are you saying, if you, you Pastor Chuck, I don't know your past at all, but what you're saying is, based on your past, you know, I don't know if the Mike, Marines, Mike, you, would you... Would you answer my question? What, no, 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 I'm, I'm, trying to answer, I'm trying to answer your question. My answer is, Yes, a pastor could be with children. Yes, if to answer your question. So a pastor with pedophilia in his bathroom, certainly, by the way, certainly, would be problematic. Certainly, you can disqualify me from the past to be heard with my affairs. That may be what you're trying to do. But I will tell you that, that those things that are committed outside of Christ I'm forgiven and I'm free from those. As are you. Amen. Whatever commit, whatever this, I'm just, and yet, you might have been a fornicator before marriage, but I have no idea, Chuck. But if you were, you're not disqualified because you were a fornicator. Even though it's on the same list. That doesn't disqualify you. No one right. say you could never be around a woman. Uh, actually, Mike, again, I wasn't going to go there, but much of the church through much of history and even currently today does believe that husband of one wife means husband of one, one wife and certainly would have concerns about a man who also had adultery in his background and certainly would have concerns about a man who also is meeting so, alone so with most of the women in the church and is defending it with doctrine that is dangerous. Gentlemen, this is this, is, this discussion this discussion that we're having, now Pastor Chuck is intimating that I'm not even qualified to be a pastor. Well, no, he's intimating more than that. He's intimating you're not saved. There, there is that. You're not I, saved. No, no I, I'm not. I, I, there is that possibility. What, I, what I'm saying is that biblical repentance... But he hasn't uh, repented. Has, has. He said he never repented of his adultery. 
And I was not explicitly said that, no. What I'm saying is... Come on, Dr. Chuck, that is what you said. There are parameters of repentance. Testing whether or not he ever repented of his adulterous affair prior to Christ because my, he's meeting with women in this church. My, that is what you said. My systematic shepherding of women alone to counsel them and instruct them privately is not in keeping with repentance as God defines it. Diligence. That is not, there is not a verse in scripture, Pastor Chuck, that supports what you just said. No. Uh, how about telling me indignation? You hated this God, hates it. Fear. You fear it. One thing that I explained to Pastor Chuck, which does, I don't know if it matters or doesn't matter, but maybe Bobby says your benefit, and maybe you know this and maybe you don't. When I first became a pastor, I had lots of concerns about how to do ministry. And one of the things that I did was try to reach out to pastors that I respected, at least based on what I knew. And when I, before I started meeting with women alone, I called... Before I, knew I called the Bethlehem Baptist and don't know who I talked to, a pastor of the day. Spent 45 minutes to an hour with each of them discussing this topic. Neither one of them forbade it. They both gave great caution, which I acknowledge and accept and practice, but neither one of them forbade it. Did you tell them that you have three and a half years of adultery in your background and that you are in particular talking about a shepherding ministry in which you're going to meeting systematically with the women of the church regularly, alone, for private counsel, but not just counsel at a particular juncture of crisis in their life, but also just meeting with them for instruction. By the way, no, certainly didn't tell them that because didn't have didn't have that practice in place. Hey, I mean, did they know when you're ministry. asking them about meeting so, so, alone? Did they know uh, about your so, history? Apparently, apparently. Pre-salvation, pre-Christ and post-Christ is meaningless to you. No, no, apparently, you're not a new creation. No, apparently, that is true. No, it, it's very much not true. That man, but, but my, no, that, man, that man is dead. Based on Scripture, my Scripture teach me that man is dead. And, and yet, Mike, um, you, you cannot condone a man with pedophilia in his background having a shepherding meeting ministry where he needs to learn his children. I can't. I do but see, you say these things just to try to drill down on something you're trying to prove. I don't know that situation. You said it. I don't know if the guy's a pastor. I don't know. Did he's a pastor? And he has a congregation? And it's an elder red church? And he has men and his wife that know him? And, and, and the fathers of those children request and the desire that they meet together? Then yes. And I'm standing by Pastor Mike. Lord willing, I am moving to Davenport, Iowa, to be under the shepherding of Pastor Mike Reed and Pastor Nick Rowland. And, and Pastor Chuck, with the way this conversation has gone today, and the way everything else has gone in this matter, I cannot in good conscience come to Oregon in August. And you, Pastor, need to determine with your elders whether or not you can continue to support my family. But you need to repent, Pastor Chuck. No, Tony. Of accusing you need Pastor to Mike. of mitigating dangerous practices and being a legalist. 
a legalist? No, Tony, it's the me. word of God. Hi, gentlemen. Brother Bobby, Bobby, I love you. Brother Bobby, I love you. You will not even entertain. Brother Tony, I love you. You will not even entertain the definition of repentance oh. or make application to my sin. You have repeatedly used rabbit trails to avoid dealing with the issues at hand. Has everyone hung up?